there's a lot of misunderstanding or not enough education or a lot of, I'll say, coined phrases in the world of gut health and probiotics and prebiotics. And, and it's kind of interesting because we sent you a article about all these software drinks that are coming out and talking about, you know, adding, you know, all these little, uh, yes. either, either original substitutes, prebiotic, you know, every, everything, you know, how many microbes and active yes. and yes. all of this stuff in a jar, in a can. Yes. Uh, and that's what kind of led us to go, hey, we really need to talk about that. And of course, yeah. that would then lead it to your Zive 7. Yes. For um, which is the that the end end goal is that's where we finish because right. of all of the stuff that you uh, this journey that you've been on for twenty plus years, especially yes. recommendations and, and 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 I think you're you know in the conversations and working with you over the years, it was your passion to have an opportunity to bring something like this to market. So which is fantastic because. Yeah, you got your it's fingerprints on it. You can, you get, it's great that Mark brought you into that that yeah. fold. So let's go way way back. Of yes, this whole whole purpose, reason, the why, why people say it, why people think they know it, and and so we can have some education a little bit about yes. the, the 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 whole purpose. Yes, for our viewers. Right. So, and it is a hot topic. And there are a lot of people, particularly influencers who have zero scientific background, who like to promote their little brand because they get paid to do that, of course. And it can be quite confusing to the audience. The other thing that's confusing to the audience will be research taken out of context, and I'll explain that here in just a minute. But, but a probiotic is simply bacteria. And with the... The issue at hand is the GI tract has 10 to 50,000, maybe more, different types of species of organisms that live within it. And those species are bacteria, yeast, fungus, viruses. Um, and so there's a long list of organisms that live in your GI tract, and they're designed to be there normally. They are not parasites. There's another, there's a parasite crowd out there. I will dispel the parasite myth. But um, so there's a lot of different organisms and they fall basically into three categories. There are those that are good for you. There are those that are bad for you. And then there's this entire group that's kind of like, meh. I mean, you know, they don't really help you. They don't really hurt you. Right. How don't help. They don't hurt. If they just... get out of balance, though, they'll rock your world if they get out of balance. So when everything's in balance, those guys are um, little kind of helper bees. The way the microbiome works is when you eat something, you have to feed this army of bacteria practically before you get fed, you know. So the food gets attacked by both your body and the microbiome. As organisms are chewing on your food, they're making little byproducts and they're metabolizing things into different things. You, human, get to use a lot of those byproducts for your benefit. So neurotransmitters come from the microbiome and vitamins do. There's something called the short-chain fatty acid, which is an anti-inflammatory thing. And your bacteria, when yep. it's a very particular type of short uh, or, or what they call an oligosaccharide. It's a very tiny fiber that's too complex to be a sugar, and it's really a simple fiber. Um, you'll get short-chain fatty acids out of that, which are good for you. And so that oligosaccharide is called a prebiotic. So you've got the pre before you get to the bacteria. You got to have the fi the prebiotic fiber, and the most common would be inulin which you can get from artichoke. Um, you can also get out of beetroot fiber. So some of these tuber-type fibers have prebiotic properties that your bacteria will turn into something helpful to you. As it turns out, that prebiotic fiber is more potent than really any organism that you can orally consume. 
And and the reason for that sure. is when bacteria goes down the hatch, it's got to get through digestive enzymes, it's got to get through acid, then it has to find a home because otherwise, you know, the poop keeps on flowing. It's what I call the fecal stream. It just it's in here, it's out there, and it's moving. And while we might think it's a slow rate of speed, it takes, you know, two to three hours to go from mouth to colon, anywhere between eight hours and three days to come out your hiney. That seems like a reasonably slow clip. But when you're a microscopic organism, holy smokes, that is a fast stream. So these guys have to make their way to the wall of the intestines to hang out there if they have any chance of surviving. And so that's the trick when you're consuming bacterial organisms is they need to survive the gauntlet and they need to find a home and they need to live there. Now, um, it's kind of similar to similar how drugs get processed, right? They go or kidney, and it's got yeah. to get through that to then. Yeah, make this it is not to just that you consume. Yeah, it's not just that you consumed it. It's, it's got to stick. It's like a vitamin. A vitamin that you poop out or you pee out is not doing you any good. So you have to be able to be able to use it. Um, one of the confusing things about modern probiotics is like how many bazillions they put in the little capsule. It can be over one. Okay. With disclosure, I have a master's degree in microbiology. I am a colorectal surgeon. So I deal in probiotics all day long. And like a year or two ago, I went to the store to buy my mother a probiotic. And I thought I knew what I wanted to get. I don't shop for these things. I don't know. I mean, I make I want you stay. To, bro. Because I was like, Okay, so yeah, Bifidus infantis. That's a good one. Oh, wait. They all have that bacteria in it. And this one has like 10 million. This one has 100 million. And, like, and then you start reading labels and getting confused. And I thought the average person, there's no possible way the average person is following this and understanding it. And the other issue is each of these probiotic organisms would represent one in 10,000 different species in your GI tract. I mean, you're, you're kind of fooling yourself if you think one is going to do it. So your right. job in life when you take a probiotic is to take one that is associated not just with benefit to you uh, in high doses, but one that has a symbiotic relationship with other organisms to help them grow also, and that improves what we call the diversity of the microbiome. In other words, you want to have as many different bacteria floating around in just the right percentage as possible. And a prebiotic fiber and certain organisms kind of promote that. So the best probiotics will include multiple organisms and a prebiotic fiber kind of all contained in the same unit. So that's the first thing about a probiotic, the difference yep. between uh, the Zive 7 probiotic that I helped develop and its precursor. I don't want to use the name brand of the precursor, but um, the creator for both of these products is the same person. And um, the precursor product doesn't have any special formulation of these bacteria to protect them. And all of the organisms in that original product were all in the same family. They were all in the lactobacillus family. And you want to diversify that up a little bit because you're trying to get rid of bad guys also. So one of the things you want to do is not just populate with good guys, but let's just face it. When there's a gang on the corner, one good guy showing up may not be enough to kick him off the corner. You know, you kind of got to show up yep. with... A battalion. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of have to be prepared to hunger, and one survivor is not going to do it. So the more organisms you can get, if they're a little bit diversified, the better. And then in particular, if you can find one that's pretty resistant to the environmental factors like acid or antibiotics or those kind of things, uh, which is why we added there's a bacillus spore forming bacteria in this new formulation, which is very, very helpful. Because that has a, a, an opportunity to actually kill bad bacteria. Those spores actually will kill bad bacteria and then they will replace. They can kill and replace. Whereas a lactobacillus is kind of like, you know, a nerd with a pocket protector. He's really not going to go to battle. You want a lot of those guys, you know, paying taxes and hanging out, but they're not exactly going to go to war for you. 
The bacillus, on the other hand, goes to war for you. So just to kind of give it an understanding of what's happening on a microscopic level. So we, those organisms in the Zive 7 are packaged in a very particular, almost like a nanoparticle way, what they call Biotope 7. And what it does is it allows for the exact pH, oxygen tension, and the exact type of food that that organism likes are all um, placed in these tiny little beads that are essentially acid resistant. So they kind of pass through the stomach without a problem. Um, right. And so that, that helps them we'll survive. The it. Yeah, it helps them survive the gauntlet. Now, these bacteria also packaged with digestive enzymes. And it is interesting. If you put digestive enzymes in with almost anything, you'll start chopping up proteins. You, see, you have to ask yourself how many bacteria are surviving when they're swimming in a sea of bacteria digestive enzymes. And so this is one of the reasons why our product kind of has such effectiveness is the way the bacteria is packaged. It survives its own packaging of digestive enzymes. It survives the stomach and your own pancreatic enzymes. And more importantly, the digestive enzymes is packaged with one of its functions is to strip away these microbacterial films, the biofilm. And you know a lot about this in, in your line of work, Mark. You know, we this one of the uh, Rob. I'm sorry, I'm talking thinking of Mark McDonald. Uh, Rob, you know, you're, we we take foreign objects. We'll develop these biofilms of bacteria. You'll get chronic infections, which is why we don't use mesh in the pelvis. We use Dermapure, right? And I'm hoping your audience knows Dermapure. I'm sure they do. But but we want to use something that's not going. To, it's not going to develop a biofilm, a biologic something that's resistant to this bacterial film. Your intestinal tract, if it's been sick enough for a long enough period of time, will develop a little biofilm. And it's very hard for those patients to get well because the bad guys are hunkered into this film. You, almost, you need to be able to enzymatically strip that away. And so that's packaged yeah. into the Zive 7. Oh, you see it in... You see it in wound care, and you see yeah. what happens when yeah. from the outside in, yes. right? You see that yes. biofilm, and, and so yes. if all these products are out there in the space, diabetics that have these things yes. happen, they'll strip that yes. same scenario here, right? We just, yes. we just don't see it. You see it. Yeah. Why? Because you're- Yeah, I'm doing scope. Yes. But it's the same concept. So, exactly. In a complex wound, you see the same thing like this shininess over a non-healing wound that just is not getting better. And you're doing all the pulses and you're doing all the dressing changes and it won't, and you can almost peel it off. And that's where the bacteria are living is in that peel. And it's it's cellophane, it's see-through peel, you know, a little bit of mucus. And uh, so anyway, this enzymatic debridement is extraordinarily helpful. It's helpful in the operating room to deploy an enzymatic debridement. And it is helpful in your GI tract to have that. So the digestive enzymes in the Zive 7, that's one of the functions that it's doing to help improve the health of your GI tract. And I think it's that combination is one of the reasons I believe my patients are seeing such benefit from this as opposed to other products that I've had them try, you know, just a probiotic or whatever. So it's when you, when you have them all in one space, they work together as a little team and it's, it's, Seems to yep. be more effective. I've had four patients this week tell me they just started the product, and nothing I've ever told them has ever helped except this. So that's a good that's a good sign. Yeah, especially yeah. because you've had them for time. Yeah. And, and, and they will do anything I tell them yeah. to do. They're desperate to get better. And so when this came out on the market yeah. about six weeks ago, they all started doing it, and within three or four weeks, they're they're all starting to call us up now and say that is absolutely helping us. So in in the trial that we had done, we had probably well, we order improvement. That's that's that? really the success. Yes, the success of, of actually reordering, right? You know, yes, when you actually can feel yes yourself better. Right? Yeah, I, a I so heard it's hard. It's, it's hard to be consistent with a multivitamin, right? Because right. how do you feel? Um, right. uh, <laughs> healthier, you know? Like I know it's helping me, right? Yes, but it's like you know. Nothing really changes, right? Yes, in your and body. And exactly. Yeah. And you'll see, we tell people to take this because of the digestive enzymes, you take it with a meal. It'll help you digest the meal. It'll help you break down the meal in a way that your body can better absorb the nutrients and that the microbiome can better use 
what's left over in that symbiotic sort of a way. And there's a few things in there that help promote regularity of the GI tract, get rid of bloating, get rid of the edema. And yes, I we tell people do three months. Put the and this is the cheapest way to get the product anyway, but put it on a three you know, an every month auto ship for a few months before you make a decision. Some people will take it as in in all unoften unoften as infrequent. As infrequently yep. as infrequently as once a day. And then some people will take it with every meal. People with really bad IBS and everything upsets their stomach will take yeah. it with every meal. So is there is there a, a high and a low? It sounds like the low is one a day, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would then- say one or two. The lowest is one a day. I, we usually suggest two. If you're going to do one capsule with a meal, I would do one in the morning and one with your biggest next meal, whether it's lunch or dinner. If you have a particular symptom, let's say, for example, and I have a lot of patients who how they wake up in the morning and they're already bloated. You know, and it gets worse as the day goes on. And those people, if they will do one or two with breakfast and lunch, they typically will find by dinner time they don't have that same kind of heaviness and bloat because it steadies it as the day goes yep. on. Then I have other patients who are totally fine because they don't eat much for breakfast. They tend to eat a large lunch and not much for dinner. And then by three hours after lunch, that's when they get belly cramps and diarrhea and whatnot. Okay. If you only wanted to take it once a day, it would be your lunch meal to take it with, right? Because now we want to utilize the digestive enzymes in addition to everything. You're getting probiotics every time you take it. The max amount we suggest taking are six a day. Uh, And so there are some people who will take six a day. If you wanted to only take one a day, you can. And if you have a really sensitive stomach, that may not be a bad place to start. You know, some people are like any new introduction. If you've been extremely, if you're one of these people who's been to a million doctors and your stomach is always dorked up and they can never figure out what the problem is, you might want to start with one a day because it's a hot mess. When you start replacing good guys and bad guys, you might even have like a back step where it's a little bit more bloated and a little bit more diarrhea. It's what we call the die-off phenomenon. Um, as bad bacteria die, I have that thing that's producing more yeah. gas. There's, and and there's sure. all kinds of signals to your brain. Yes, the, the, those right. bacteria, as they die, are sending you signals. To trick you to keep me. Yes. <laughs> Yes, keep eating the sugar. Don't you want that donut? Uh, yeah, I get, hell no, I don't want that donut. Right? Not of the not of the right. bacteria are telling me to eat it. So, so they send these distress signals to your brain by way of neurotransmitters and whatnot. This is why you get cravings. So, if you can make it through the first couple of weeks and all that kind of ookiness and cravings and stuff, eat a clean diet. So, a clean diet's a big part of it. And I had mentioned Mark McDonald earlier, but but that's his shtick, right? Is the clean diet. Um, that eating little diet, little meals throughout the day so you don't overwhelm your GI tract. And those patients who follow that small meals every three hours might want to do just one with each of those small meals uh, to even out their upset stomach. So everyone's a little bit different, so it's hard to give medical advice, obviously, to strangers, but that would be how I would start the process. Yeah, I mean, you know, Slow and steady wins the race, right? You got to give your start low, body yeah. enough time to start low adjust. Good. Yeah. And exactly, and then you can see, okay, I'm starting to feel better. And you know, especially if you're talking about the the that lining, you know, where you have to now kind of release that. So yes, it's that, an effort. Yeah. That alone takes yes. some time, right? Yes, it so absolutely does. Know, so, so it's like that's where you're saying, hey, three months is is really where it, you should be able to get to your optimal yeah. uh, GI yeah. balance. Now, there's a lot of I know there's a lot of I know there's a lot of women that watch this program and I know there's a lot of surgeons that you have visiting because we're talking about pelvic floor health and whatnot. So this is kind of important to that crowd. If you're going to have a surgery, let's say for a pelvic floor reconstruction, a lot of those women have horrific bowel habits, which is they're just terrible. This is the kind of thing that I would have you start several months before we go to the operating room. The time to change your life is not with fresh incisions, and now you're trying to heal. 
So the, for the best outcomes, right. for the maximal amount of nutritional support, for the least amount of GI distress, you know, give your poor urogynecologist a break, man. Okay, so you want to start this process early, right? You want to start it early. A lot of these women are menopausal, and so some of the organisms that we've chosen are actually important for something they call the estrobolome. The estrobolome. Scientist in their words, you know what I'm saying? That's the microbiome that helps women metabolize and hold on to their estrogen. You know, so here we are, and I'm menopausal, right? It, you know, who isn't? And one of the first things that happens is your GI tract starts kind of acting wonky and you can't lose weight and the stress and all that. There are bacteria in your intestinal tract that I promise you are trying to help you and you just need to support them. So there are several lactobacillus species that will help that process, and they are in this product. So a couple of reasons your audience are interested, and one of them, because many of them are in the perimenopausal menopausal, this is the support that women in that time of their lives need. And then in the operative crowd, people who you want normal bowel habits, the best absorptive capacity so they're not malnutritioned when they're trying to heal a complex way. You don't have to strain. You don't want people yeah, straining. You want them absorbing all that protein. Yeah, and I mean, I put all my patients on high protein, a collagen, a vitamin C, all these different things to help improve protein deposition, healing of chronic wounds. And if your gut is up, upset, you're not absorbing any of that. That's a waste of money right. if you have this this upset IBS malabsorption phenomenon. So I would suggest to the surgeons and to the patients, two or three months before surgery, if, if it's an elective surgery, to start that product, because I think it'll be very helpful. My patients swear by which, it. Which most, most of the time when you go in to see your surgeon, mm -hmm. they say, okay, yes, you decided to have surgery. Now we're going to get you scheduled. All right. So... A lot of times it's eight weeks out, you know, at least in, at least four, six. In my practice, it can be months. If I'm, if, yep. If I'm working with a urogynecologist, it can take four months to to do a combo case. Yeah, yeah easy. Mm -hmm. Right. Plenty of time. You guys lined up, so that's plenty of time to get plenty time. your colon yes. calmed, right? Yes. And that's really the, 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 the idea and the concept about yes. probiotics, the prebiotics, is yes. to uh, have a better colon at yes. the end of the day. Yes. Yeah. You know, and 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 you know. So what's what's really changed if you if you go back and and you know is it is it as we get older is it food supply is it a combination of both uh, you know like kids are dealing with this I mean what's yes. what do you see in your practice from a from an age standpoint, and then kind of how do those things differ as we progress? Yes. I would say this is one of the reasons why I hopped into the wellness space, because the incidence of GI distress is like, it is exploding and getting younger and younger. Cancers are getting younger and younger. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are going up. There's a lot of debate as to what may be causing these things. Unfortunately, medicine has a tendency to look at the human as being the point of weakness. And in my opinion, your body is not what failed. Your body got woefully confused because of the external. A lot of these external toxins are biologic compounds you know, an herbicide, a pesticide, a fertilizer, these are all carbon-based compounds that can confuse the hell out of your body. If you take a seed oil and let it sit out on the counter as it oxidizes, that becomes an incredible inflammatory molecule. Again, this confuses the body. Then we're adding antibiotics to everything. We're putting antimicrobial soap on everything. We're not letting our kids play with the pets. The next thing you know, everyone's got an allergy, a peanut allergy. We all have autoimmune diseases. And so it's a compound of things. As I go deeper into the dive, it's artificial lighting. 
Uh, fluorescent lighting is horrific for your body. So is uh, sound, artificial sounds, modern music in particular. These things are all so let's just, damaging. Just, let's cut the uh, let's cut the podcast right now, then, Doctor. I'm going to turn off my lights, and I'm going to yeah. Well, you can you know like in you look. I do not send me back even fifty years if I cannot have running water and electricity. I'm not going to make it. I would not do well on the frontier. I don't like to camp. I can't do it. I like my modern my modernities. Okay. So you're going to have to live in the modern world, and I don't want people paranoid, but you can know what does what. No, artificial sweeteners are antimicrobials. They'd never get broken down. They make it through the stomach as this antimicrobial, which means they're killing your microbiome. So it is not a mystery that people who drink diet soft drinks actually are more prone to gaining weight than those who drink sugared soft drinks. Now, I'm not saying drinking sugared soft drinks because that's the devil as well. I'm just saying artificial sweeteners are doing more just damage. Be, right. yeah, they're doing more damage than good. They're actually, they're actually tricking, confusing. Yeah. They're confusing your body. The, the, it tastes sweet to your little tongue, which means it tastes sweet to the right. rest of your body. The difference is when you eat real sugar, your body releases a GLP-1, tells your stomach to slow down so you don't dump all that carbohydrate into the intestines. When you eat artificial sweeteners, that does not happen. So you actually have an increase in appetite. When you consume that Diet Coke with your dinner, you're going to consume more calories by definition. You're going to be hungrier, longer. You'll never feel full. It's tricking your body. That's it. Yes. So so these yeah. things are biologic signals that are tricking your body, but not just tricking your body. They're tricking the microbiome. And, and honestly, I believe, like if I were to write a James Bond, you know, like the evil, you know, the evil guy with the bald cat, you know, who's extorting the world, this would be one of... This would be one of the things that I would do. The people would have no idea they were being poisoned because the food tastes like food. It, it kind of looks like food. Your government is calling it a food and letting you buy it with your food stamps and whatnot that. It's really not a food. This is processed stuff from a vat that's put into calories that you consume. Your body really can't absorb or use that for anything other than making fat, to be honest with you. The microbiome does not yep. know what to do with this. It cannot use this. Bacteria that love fat proliferate. Bacteria that love carbohydrates proliferate. But the bacteria that love veggies, and those are the ones that actually help you, are the ones that love veggies. They die, right? So the guys that hurt you go up. And the guys that help you go down, the more you eat processed food. And so it is, we're poisoning society while we're all getting fat. It's like the obese malnourished. It seems like a paradox, but that's exactly what's happening. We're all woefully malnourished, yet we're all gaining weight. Except you, Rob, you're looking fantastic. So you're obviously doing something right. But the rest of us are struggling. <laughs> the rest of us are not doing well. Yeah. So that's what's going on. So your microbiome is paying a price for modern stuff. And so you just have to read labels, know where it is, spend time in the real light, in God's given sunlight, without sunscreen, so you can get some vitamin D, you know, drink filtered water, maybe not in a bottle, you know, try not to put too many flavors in things, try not to do too much sugar and additives. I guess that would be my advice to stay away from the, the chemicals. Confuses the body. And then it doesn't know how to where to put it, how to deal with it. it Starts yes. to do different things that you spoke about, which is hold on to fat, build more fat, think that you need more calories, and and actually you don't. But right, your body doesn't recognize that. Uh, so so now we've got to this 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 you know let's go back to prior to the Zive Seven going in there and and, and picking out the the supplements 
I mean, it's really, really confusing for these for these consumers. Yes. And, I, and I think that was yes your goal to go. All right, just one. You know, that's all you spent, need. Uh, a lot of time, a lot yeah. of time, money, uh, learning, uh, developing. Yes, you know, curating to the point where now you can actually bring to market product that right you feel good about um yeah, it's all in one shopping one of yeah it's all in one shopping so people really don't have to think about it it's got the pre-digestive stuff the probiotic stuff the food for all the bacteria uh and the herbs that kind of support the gi tract you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars a month um to do that so that's the beauty of the all-in-one location so and and, and just kind of talk to the audience a little bit about what Mark has done and the relationships he's had and how he's really resourced the best of the best, right? Cause that that's, yeah, that's he was another new- very difficult part. It is, so, you know, because he was nutritionist to the stars for so many years on Venice Beach and he was, he's been on Oprah and Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz and I'm like, name a show. Mark has done a nutritional segment on that show, usually as a recurring person, so he knows kind of all the people. He was the nutritionist to the NFL for the NFL Combine for young athletes who want to join the NFL. And so he was in charge of shepherding those guys and getting them to a state of optimal health. He believes in education, yep. but as it turns out, he also knows people who are kind of firmly behind him. So, you know, he's got the investors for some of these products and whatnot. He has very, tens of thousands, if not more than that, loyal followers who he has helped personally that follow along. And so his mission is like, how can we make it as good as humanly possible? He's always pushed balancing blood sugar naturally, and he's always pushed gut health. And there's personal reasons that he chose those two sort of things. And this one product kind of hits that thing. Now, he does plan on expanding to a collagen and to a hydration fluid and those sorts of things. So that's all forthcoming from the same company. But it is all high quality. Everything is um, inspected by the NSF and certified by the National Sports Foundation. So it is as inspected. It's really as it, tough to do. Oh, it's, it's I don't think- extremely hard to do. And for the price point that he picked... Like you, do, people people will look and say, "Oh, it's a, you know, a forty five dollar sh- with shipping product. That's really expensive. Find one that's NSF certified. That's less expensive. You can't. A line alone on the counter at your pharmacy is going to cost you thirty seven dollars, and it's just a probiotic, one bacteria, no prebiotic to it. So when you start thinking, wait a second, something that is inspected and it is clean and um, it's been certified by a third party who does the testing, plus it has all the ingredients in it, plus it's multiple organisms that are protected to live throughout the GI tract. It's really very difficult for anyone to um, compete in that space. It's it's really, it's a one-of-a-kind um, scenario. We went out and tried to resource all of these components separately. They're going to be probably close to two hundred dollars oh i would think to to get there i, I would right? think i would think very easily yeah yeah i would think you know, very easily then you, then you made the i mean the pills how much each one what ratio and when to take it you know, now next thing you know you're choking down pills all day long you know so right yeah it's it's a distinct it's a definite issue for sure so it's great it's great to have that type of technology right now especially based on the fact that you know we've developed all this technology in our f- food source but that's actually not gone the right way right based on what's happening to not only our country but the west rest of the world as they yes uh, consume the american diet uh, yes more more and more complications go with it so we're very fortunate to have people like mark and people like yourself that can step in and provide a a, a excellent product that yes. is uh, 
easy to buy, easy to consume, and will give you some benefits that you can directly feel. Exactly. Yeah. Just give it a couple we're all gonna, We're all going to feel better. You're all going to feel better. We're going to feel better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so we had a, someone from the uh, audience sent us in the little chat. Yeah. Was asking about travel and gut. Yes. So loading from flight and then how to prevent it or things that you can do to that recover from it. Yeah. And a lot of that is related to number one, what you're eating. Number two, when you're, because when you travel, you're dehydrated, you're eating airport food, seed oils, you're probably not chewing it well because you got to catch a flight and make a transfer. These things cause difficult with digestion. And then because you're at an altitude, which sort of changes things, and they never give you enough water to drink, and you're sitting next to someone who's probably not going to move when you have to pee. So then you're now you're dehydrated on top of everything else. So I would suggest to people, make sure you stick to eating a healthy, healthy diet. Stay away from the seed oils. A product like Zyve 7 that has digestive enzymes is going to help you with that gas bloat. Make sure you're drinking enough water. Make sure you're getting enough walking around while you're traveling. Take a couple laps around the airplane if it's a long flight, and that has a tendency to help that. That'll help keep that calm. Yes. And if you get off and, and, and are bloated, or you, I guess you're going to, you might feel a little bit more full when you're not full. Right. Certainly, if you've got a meal that you're going to go have a meal, then consume the Zyve 7 in conjunction with the meal, and hopefully that will bring things back down. Right. How I feel. Exactly. Beautiful. Perfect. I think we covered. A ton team. of ground we, today. We did. We got heavy into some science, and uh, we're gonna. We can also post some clinicals that are currently yeah, out there. Absolutely. Talk about. Some. Yep. You know, because one of the things that you and I spoke about is that you know we we both do a ton of research, and there's so much that's going on. In the world, not just here in the in, in the U.S., but you know, in, in different parts of the world, to have some really great uh, papers that are that are published on a on a monthly basis, and so we're always looking for those, curating those, and of course, trying to put you know in front of our audience the ones that uh, align to some of the topics that we talk about, so that uh, it's not not us just Yes, you know, there's certainly some opinions here, but for the most part, we try to stay in the world of yes. of Hi. science and facts. Yes, and, and yes. that uh, and past experience, uh, so that you can feel confident that we're trying to point you in the right direction. Of course, at the end of the day, you have to make your best choices, and of course, always consult your physician because there might be some other comorbidities that are happening within your life that you that we're not aware of so right. exactly all of those things are, are certainly important and i'm sure there'll be some comments that we can take a look at uh next time you're on the program yeah perfect so Thank yes you. wonderful yes. well having you uh on today's conversation yes. and i know we get a lot of uh likes and comments and views be awesome. and certainly hopefully this is yeah. helpful and beneficial and we'll probably learn something based on some of the feedback yeah and, i would love to see the feedback absolutely for sure absolutely i would okay. love to see that. 